we got a request from one of our viewers asking how could, could you do a quick tip on how to do a good foreground she says i find that i often end up with a blank a blank bit at the bottom of the canvas where i'm not quite sure what to do we have some answers for that one A lot of times we can get in trouble when our painting, when we get our attention uh, aimed in the wrong direction. Well, here's what I mean by that. When you're doing a painting, you're not just painting objects or images, but you're designing space as well. We forget that sometimes. We'll get focused on, I want to paint that jar, or I want to paint that lamp, or I want to paint that person, or whatever. And we forget that that's just a part of what we're doing. We're using that as our subject, yes, but we're designing space. And it's how we design that space or how we think about that space. Not just how you think about the, the subject itself, but how you think about the space. And you can get your clues about foreground, background, almost anything dealing with painting by looking at the masters. Find an artist who knows what they're doing. Find a master artist uh, who knows how to deal with space. Some that you trust, some that other people trust, that master artists trust. Uh, a good one here is Chong Wong. He's really, really good with designing space and especially with still life. But he's good with, with designing all kinds of space. Now here's an example. Look, if we take this subject, which is very plain, and I intentionally got something that didn't have anything going on in the background or the foreground but if we're going to do a painting of that just painting this empty space here wouldn't be very interesting it wouldn't say anything about these and your how you design your foreground and your background uh will t is supposed to somehow or should somehow refer back to this now look what he's done here and i'll show you a little example of how you might manage that for something like this what he's done is he's paid attention. He's not looking just at tomatoes, but he's paying attention to what's going on around the space here. And he may have added a couple of things here in order to make that more interesting, but he's done something else too. He's paying attention to where the, the more shadow areas are. You see he's designed this in a cooler color. And then where the lighter areas are, he's designed that with a warmer color. Now you can take clues like that from any master artist's work and just apply those clues. Ask yourself, what did that artist do? Pinpoint it down to just designing temperature or just designing colors or values. And then you'll get your clues as to how to handle that. So if we were gonna do something like this, and I'll, I'll just do just a little bit here to show you how to think about that which is what I like to do, you know, rather than say, this is how you do it. How do you think about it? So if we were doing something like that in, let's say, right up here in this space, and suppose we were, we were placing these, well, we need a place to place them, but you have a canvas, and it's called this the canvas, and say you're placing these in a way that they, it was, it's going to make a, a relatively good composition. So you might place this one uh, Going back to the rebotment quick tip, I might want to place that sort of on the rebotment line. So you sort of place these these images, and I'll just do a, just a quick little indication there where they might sit. And then this one might sit behind it, and it goes up about right in here somewhere like that, sort of off. And uh, then this one might, um, this one's got its little curly cute stuff going on here. This one's going to be placed sort of back here. And it does uh, say the bottom of that one may align right in here somewhere and move over into to that space. And just very loosely place that for you so I can show you what I mean. And then something like that. Now, here we go. There's that space, that it that into space. How can I make this as well as this? But this is what the the uh, request was about. How can I make this relate to this? What can I do? that is similar to what he's done here. And that's the way I can learn from him. So um, if you'll notice, he hasn't made a real delineation in background and foreground, but we can sort of tell where it is. So we can make that decision 
Uh, do we want this space to uh, be a kind of foreground space that ends higher up or lower down? That would be maybe the first decision that you would make. And so what has he done? He's gone about two-thirds of the way up. You see how the space flow divides itself into thirds there. So he's come down about a, a third of the way. Well, we wouldn't want that to align with the tops of the cups. So we might come down to something about, say, about right here. So, okay, that's going to be where the foreground space will begin. And then right in here will be the space. Where I have come 50-50. Well, <laughs> just, we'll just extend the canvas up and make that uh, you can't do that if you've got a stretch canvas. Never mind. This is the space we're dealing with. Now, what do we observe about what uh, Chang Wang has done here that we can do? Uh, what he's done is he's paid attention to the shadow area. So we have shadow here that's creating a type of shape. And shadow here, shadow here. And the light is doing this. So you, when you define to yourself, in this case, what shadow and light are doing, we can use that for creating that foreground space and make it interesting. And so just very quickly, uh, we might define, I'll get some color on the palette, and I'm just going to use, uh, I'm just going to use the ultramarine blue and the um, Rembrandt transparent oxide red here as colors for creating that uh, sort of neutral that we have, and see how we would do that. Okay, so uh, what am I seeing there in the, in the way of, uh, of dark? I'm going to do the cool, warm thing. The same kind of cool, warm thing that he's done here. So we can get a, get a mixture here that is about a, that value of the darkest dark there is about, uh, it's a shadow value that ends up being about a value... Uh, seven-ish or something like that if we're using I'll just make sort of a little bit of a scale value here and we'll pull just enough of this in here to create that um, neutrality you create the neutral of that and let's get some a little bit more cool in there so that we've got a cool warm mixture here that we can work with we'll get a little bit more of the cool in here now so I'll do that and I, I want to be able to vary that value. So I've got the darker here and I've got the darker here. Now I'm going to move over here and pull a little bit of the warmer mixture into that. I usually will work with a value line as if you've watched other or any of the lessons you know, you know that little trick. So here we go. So just briefly, just uh, as a sort of a block in, what we might do there is we would create a cool and we a cool shadow shape, a cool-ish shadow shape. So here we start, that's probably dark enough. It's, that's sort of in the same value range that he's working here. So I might work that. Now I'm thinking in terms of divine, designing this space, this space to enhance this. So then I might just take that cool shadow area over here. I might block it in like that. I might bring that cooler shadow area sort of like that. Maybe let it fall down just a little bit, sort of like it does there. Uh, I've got the cooler here, the cooler shadow shape here. Might even work it in like that. Now let's see, it's moving, the shadow shape is moving sort of in that direction like that. And then what's happening there on the corners, let's get that just a little bit lighter, but keeping it cooler, sort of in the same vein that we see uh, that he's done here. And we'll keep it cooler. There we go. Uh, and we'll go into the corner areas and we might design that space. So we get some sort of interesting shape going on here that helps support that. You see that then gives the relationship between that frontal space and the images themselves, which is important. Um, not having to find those images, you don't have that to refer to, but we're just looking at designing space right now. Now I might do just a little bit more. Um, he has allowed the the he's allowed the shadow area to sort of gradate. It's light over here and I mean darker over here and lighter as it goes here. Something similar here, but this is darker in the corners as it's going there. And if I'm looking at that in real life, I might want to pick up on that and just sort of maybe darken 
the space here, I'm going to keep that direction of shadow uh, moving in this direction right here. Now I would go and, and block in that uh, the area where the light shines, block that in a little bit warmer. So I can say I'm using a temperature variation here to design that space. And design that space so that we can make it interesting, keeping the values are relatively like I'm seeing them here, but give them a little bit more shape. And so let's give that, uh, I'll bring that value up just a little bit here, and we'll see how that works. So then when I put this warmer, see that's too dark, that's dark enough to be shadow, so then I would reach over and grab some white and lighten that up. Let's get that kind of a, a lighter value that would indicate more or less uh, a, a light shining on that surface. So I can put that in there and I'll begin to kind of stroke that in and stroke it in here. That would more or less get that blocked in and then we can begin to shape that. We've got that block in here, so we need to come over here. I think maybe I'll let it go off the edge there, just sort of in that little value shape. Now now we've got the shapes defined. Let's see what we can do with those shapes to make them more interesting. So I want to then tie this in with what I have here. All that's a part of what we might call frontal space. So in order to do that, what are we seeing there? Well, we're seeing shadow. So I'll go back into the shadow cool. And we will I'll pick it as cool here. So we have the cool, we have the cool dark that reads, it could begin to read kind of warm there. You see, this is this is how we the we can think as we're designing space. So I'll just sort of put that there. This is still just blank in. And so we'll just keep that very cool and even dark. And let's let that uh, gradate out just a little bit. So I want that to make some sort of sense. So we'll let it catch a little bit of light up here. And then let's see, we'll pick it up right over here. Let it catch a little bit of the cooler light there. Now what do we have? All right, we have that, we have the space designed. So now we can put the finishing touches on the space. The space design, the design usually happens during the block end portion. So we can put those finishing touches on the space. We can decide, do we want the blend? But do we want the gradations happening here, or do we want more brush work, more uh, distinction of space? could do it either way. I'm going to reach in for the white here, and I'm going to enhance the light a little bit. Uh, enhance the light that's moving in this direction here just a little bit. Just pull that together like that. And then I'm going to give this, pull this, just a little bit of a gradation there. Get that sort of blended in with that like that and we'll pull that then let this sort of gradate in here I'm keeping that direction moving between this space and this space let's pull a little bit of that cooler into here like that so I'm really now responding more to what I'm developed here than I am here I'm just taking his principle of dividing the space into warm and cool uh, rather than just painting it just a plain gradation that doesn't have a lot going on in it right there. So then I can play with some light up here. I can do all sorts of things. I can even add some light in here if I want to. And and then go back and rebuild that handle in it later. And we can add maybe a little bit more light over here if we want to. Now let's see what we've got. So you see now we're beginning to get something interesting in terms of, de of designing space. We can even now begin to overlay some of that warm on top of the cool uh, here and maybe here just a little bit so sort of get that going and maybe we want to put just a little bit more emphasis on the shadow portion there in other words once you get the uh, once you, you, you approach the idea that this space is defining something. It's not just empty space on the canvas, but this space is defining something. It's defining the light and shadow. In this case, it's shining on the surface. If I had other little things on that surface, I could include those too. But the important thing is that you observe something that's happening here 
and you make it happen here. So I'll just call that a type of block in that will get you started and just look at one more approach to how that foreground space might be divided in a landscape. Of course, I go back to Richard Schmidt. He's the master of landscape design. And one thing that you'll notice about Richard Schmidt's landscapes, when it's, there's lots of space in front, he's a master at finding little things in that space that can keep it interesting. So it's a matter of looking at that as subject matter. This, 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 this as subject matter, not as just space. So you can see here, I won't go into uh, demoing, but you can see here how you could take this idea and you could translate the idea here. What is the idea? He's found interesting patterns of the value variations in this frontal space. And you can see he's found the patterns, he's found the light and the darker patterns here, but he's also found the brush strokes that indicate what that is. So if you think like that, you think with the visual elements, look for things that re refer back to visual elements. Look for shape. Look for directional changes. Look for value changes. Look for temperature changes. The things that make things up, the, th the things that make up things that we see. Look for those things and then you can use those things to de design that space in front and always end up with an interesting foreground. Be sure to view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com where I have full length lessons downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.